Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and as you've probably heard by now, SpaceX's rocket to launch CRS-16 to the space station was successful, but the booster landing was not successful in incredibly dramatic style. So as you probably, as you remember, CRS-16 was delayed a day because the, there was an issue with mouse food being moldy. But uh, yeah, it successfully launched, it hit its launch window, put the spacecraft, and then the booster did its usual flip to fly back. It performed the entry burn, and then soon after the entry burn, something happened to the grid fins, and what happened was the booster started to spin off axis, and it span faster and faster, and then SpaceX cut the feed. Now, of course, we had lots of people on the ground, including Das Valdez, Kerbal Space Academy, and he was on the scene with his Nikon P1000 getting amazing shots, and we could actually watch this thing spin down through the atmosphere very, very quickly, and then as it got lower, it slowed down, and the engines took over, and it did actually perform a nice, soft landing. It was quite amazing to watch the engine correct this. Um, now, Elon Musk has confirmed that it was a hydraulic pump that stalled and therefore the fins did not have uh, pr um, you know, hydraulic pressure to be able to perform. You can see in the video that the grid fins actually turned hard over trying to compensate for this. The two fins that we can see in the video are probably getting having enough pressure to stop this. Um, so yeah, it, because it lacked the aerodynamic control, that meant that it was unable to perform the translation to get its landing spot as close to the landing pad as possible, so it would have landed just off the coast. That's a, that's a designed feature, so that if something fails like this, that it will land in a safe location. The fact that they were able to soft land this kind of blows my mind. I'm not sure like if the algorithm that controlled it understood what was going on. but. <laughs> But yeah, it's soft landed, it's apparently tipped over and is intact and is transmitting data. Now the question I have is, will they recover it? Will they be able to depressurize it? Because this previously happened and they were unable to depressurize the tanks and they had to destroy the booster that had landed in the ocean. In this case, it's a lot closer, so I'm thinking that they, they can't just sink this one in the ocean. So yeah, look, the mission is a success. That's the most important thing. This is a fresh booster as well. This wasn't a reflight of an existing booster. So it's not like, you know, flight proven is a bad feature. No, this was completely fresh. It's performed a successful mission. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure what else to say other than this was pretty darn exciting to watch. We were all, it's, it's funny that when we watched on the Valdez stream, like, it looked like it might be landing and staying upright, but of course it was revealed afterwards it had landed on water, so we wouldn't have expected it to stay upright after landing anyway. Well, such a shame. Um, yeah, and there's another news report that's floating around that I just want to clarify. Wired ran a story about uh, a, an instrument on the space station that is suggesting that dragon capsules are perhaps outgassing and potentially contaminating um, contaminating experiments. This is a very, very minor issue and you know it's just one of these teething problems, one of these things you learn. It's correlated with high beta angle which is a fancy way of saying it gets worse when there is more sun shining on the spacecraft. Yes, thank you. So it's possibly paint on the exterior of the spacecraft is boiling and hasn't, uh, is outgassing. Something like only seven of 56 experiments could be affected by this, so I'm sure by this point they're working on it. If there really was an, an issue, they would not be launching CRS-16 at this point. So yes, that's the big news. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.